Before we get into new types of transformations, let's take a look at the types of transformations that you would have done already with quadratics in grade 10. Uh, so first of all, uh, we've got a possibility of reflection over the x-axis, and that happens when there's a negative in front of the function that we have. So in the case of quadratic functions, uh, that would look like y is equal to negative x squared. With the other parent functions, the negative is in front of each of those types of functions. So we've got negative, and then that's in front of square root of x. Uh, the negative is in front of the fraction part in the reciprocal function, and the negative is in front of the absolute value sign in the absolute value function. We've also got vertical stretches and compressions, and that's affected by the factor a that's multiplied by your function. Uh, so again, in the case of quadratics, that would be y equals a times x squared, and that a indicates uh, a stretch if the a value is greater than 1, and a compression if the a value is between 0 and 1. Uh, now, we're not looking at the negative sign uh, with that a value because we're looking at the negative sign for reflection or not a reflection. Uh, so really, we're looking at the absolute value of a, whatever that positive number is that's there. Uh, in terms of the other parent functions, we've got a in front of or a multiplied by the square root of x, uh, and that's going to affect that square root function in the same way that it would have affected the quadratic function, uh, which means uh, whatever your a value is, uh, you're going to be multiplying your y values from your parent function by your a value to get uh, your new function. For the reciprocal function, we would have a times 1 over x, or a times that parent function. And of course, a times 1 over x is the same as a over x. And for the absolute value function, the a is multiplied in front of the uh, absolute value signs. So it's a times the absolute value of x. Then we've got vertical translations and horizontal translations. Uh, vertical translations happen when we have our function, uh, our base function, parent function, uh, and then we're adding a value after that. Uh, that indicates either we're moving up if C is positive or we're moving down if C is negative. Okay? For our parent functions, that looks like the square root of X and then afterwards plus C. So we would take our parent function of the square root of X and shift it up C units if it's positive, down C units if it's negative. Uh, for the reciprocal function, Y equals 1 over X and then afterwards plus c, again, indicates a shift up or down. And finally, y equals absolute value of x plus c, same idea. For horizontal translations, that is uh, affecting the x values, whereas the vertical translations affect the y values, which is why uh, our old y values, the f of x value, we're adding c to it. Okay? The horizontal translation is affecting x values, and so that's going to happen inside the brackets in the function notation. So x minus d is used to indicate a horizontal translation. If the d value is positive, meaning, so for example, x minus 5, d is positive 5, that indicates a shift to the right. And if the d value is negative, so let's say x minus negative 5, or that would be written as x plus 5, uh, d value is negative, you're going to shift to the left. Uh, for our parent functions, it's going to look something like this. So this time it's under the, all under the square root sign together, x minus d. So it looks a little bit different from the vertical translation where the plus c part is outside of the square root sign. Uh, for the reciprocal function, y equals 1 over x minus d. And again, different from the vertical translation where the C is being added after the fraction, the D is in the denominator. And finally, the absolute value function, this will look like uh, the absolute value of X minus D, all in the absolute value signs. Uh, again, in comparison to the plus C that's being added outside of the uh, absolute value sign. So now we're going to see some new transformations that you haven't done before in grade 10. And we're going to use the uh, letter K to denote a horizontal stretch or compression factor. 
just like A would represent the vertical stretch or compression factor uh, that would be multiplied in front of the function notation. So the way this uh, K factor or horizontal stretch or compression factor works, uh, now for now we're just going to look at uh, the horizontal stretch or compression, but just like if A is negative, and that would indicate a reflection, also, if K is negative, that's going to indicate a type of reflection as well, right? But for now, we're just going to look at what is that uh, number K and disregard whether it's positive or negative. So if that absolute value of K happens to be a value greater than one, then that's actually going to indicate a compression. So this is the opposite from what you know with uh, vertical stretch of compression, because for a vertical stretch of compression, if the A value is greater than 1, that indicates a stretch, okay? So this is the opposite. So if the absolute value of K is greater than 1, then your parent function is going to be compressed horizontally by a factor of 1 over the absolute value of K. Whereas if the absolute value of K is a value between 0 and 1, then our parent function f of x is going to be stretched horizontally by a factor of 1 over k. So here's an example using quadratic functions. Uh, so our parent function is going to be f of x equals x squared, and so there's that function on our graph. Okay, notice some of the key points that we've talked about, so 0, 0, 1, 1, 2, 4, and this problem would indeed continue in both these directions. Okay. Let's say we now have the equation y equals, in brackets, 2x all squared. Okay. Now because that 2 is in the brackets with the x and it's not multiplied by the entire function in front, but because it's in the brackets with the x, that's what means it's a horizontal stretch or compression. We would get this function by substituting in 2x in place of x in our parent function. Okay. So the 2 is the k value. Now if 2 is the k value, well we know that the absolute value of 2 is a number greater than 1. And so this is going to mean that f of x is compressed horizontally by a factor of 1 over the absolute value of k. So if k is 2, that means 1 over 2. Now, if we take a look at the point 1, 1, so this is one of our key points on our parent function, that point 1, 1, if we were to apply a horizontal compression, okay, that's going to push the function in closer towards the y-axis. A horizontal stretch, on the other hand, is going to pull the function farther away from the y-axis horizontally. Okay. So this... Uh, so this point, 1, 1, if we apply a horizontal compression by a factor of 1 half, that means that we want to take the x value of this point and multiply it by 1 half. So if we take the x value of 1, multiply it by a half, we get 1 half. Okay? So again, that key point has now moved closer to the y-axis. It's being horizontally compressed. And so under this transformation, that key point of 1, 1 is going to move to 1 half 1. Okay. And if we do something similar with all of the other key points, so if we take the point 2, 4, that x value is 2. If we compress it horizontally by a factor of a half, that means we're going to take the x value of 2 and multiply by a half to get 1. And because of the symmetric properties of a parabola, it's going to be the same on the left-hand side of the y-axis. So we get a new function that looks something like this. Our parent function in this case is f of x is equal to the absolute value of x. So let's start by graphing that, which we should all be very familiar with at this point. Now we want to apply this transformation. So we want to graph the new function where y is equal to the absolute value of 1 half times x. Now because that 1 half is with the x inside the absolute value signs and not in front of the absolute value signs, that's what makes it a horizontal stretch or compression compared to a vertical stretch or compression. So here we want to look at this 
k factor of one half, does that indicate a stretch or a compression? And using our rules about stretch or compression, because one half, or the absolute value of one half, uh, is between zero and one, this is going to indicate a horizontal stretch by a factor of, remember the factor is going to be one over the absolute value of k. The absolute value of k is one half, one over one half is equal to two. So here we have a horizontal stretch by a factor of two. Now we're gonna take one of our key points, so one, one, which is on our parent function. And if we apply a horizontal stretch by a factor of two, that means we're going to multiply the x value by two. The x value is one, if we multiply that by two, we're going to get a point right here at two, one. Okay. We do the same thing for all of the other key points. So this key point is two, two. And if we do a horizontal stretch by a factor of two, going to multiply the x value by 2 and get 4. So if we do that to all of the key points, we're going to get this function in green. Just as a reminder, that point 0, 0, it doesn't move after the transformation, and so that's called an invariant point. If in our function notation we have a negative in front of the x, inside the function notation brackets, as opposed to being in front of the function, that in front of the function would indicate a reflection over the x-axis, which you've seen before. But if that negative appears inside with the x value, then that's going to indicate reflection over the y-axis. So if that k value is less than zero, okay, or is a negative number, then in addition to whatever uh, horizontal stretch or compression factor there might be, there's also going to be a reflection over the, uh, over the y-axis. So here's an example. If we start with our parent function, f of x is equal to the square root of x, which looks like this. And we apply the transformation so that we want the equation y is equal to the square root of negative x. Okay, well, that negative is inside the square root sign as opposed to being in front of the square root sign. So that's a horizontal reflection or a reflection over the y-axis. So we want to take this whole graph and reflect it over this y-axis line. Okay? And just like a reflection over the x-axis, where the y values would change signs, so any positive y values would become negative and vice versa, for a reflection over the y-axis, we're going to change the sign of the x values. So any x values that are positive are now going to become negative x values and vice versa. So for the x value of 0, that point's going to remain invariant. Okay? The x value of 1, that's going to reflect over and now be at negative 1, our next value. The x value of 4, that point is going to reflect and become an x value of negative 4. And so when we graph those uh, new key points, we're going to get a function that looks like this in green. Now this video just goes over some of the basic ideas behind reflections over the y-axis, and horizontal stretch or compression. On Monday in class, we're going to talk further uh, about this topic and uh, do some examples that uh, contain horizontal stretch or compression, uh, as well as some of the other transformations that we've already done in the past.